What thought comes to mind when you see a picture of a crucifixion? But what is it that we don't see? Because that is what God sees. So let's look at the scripture for today. And the reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 19 through to 29. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, what it is that we don't see and what God sees, sacrifice is at the heart of God's plan for all humanity. For example, when Adam and Eve sinned, it was God who offered the first sacrifice. He killed some animal and covered their nakedness with skins. Fig leaves could cover their body, but not cover their sin. In Leviticus 17, the scriptures teach that life is in the blood. And the law of God says, the soul that sins shall die. And so sin always and will always require life giving for someone. So God shed blood, placed the skins on Adam and Eve as the first testimony of what he would do down through the ages until finally the Lamb of God would come to be slain for the sins of the world. God has always chosen to deal with the sins of his children through sacrifice. In 1 Peter 2.24, we read, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Jesus bore our sin whom the Father sent to assume full responsibility for all of our sin and guilt, and at the same time make it possible for us to be free from the punishment and guilt of our sin and become righteous and holy in his sight. So what happened on the cross of Calvary that awful Friday was that God executed his own son as the ultimate the final, the adequate sacrifice for the sins of all humankind. God has always dealt with sin and still deals with sin only through sacrifice. The reason we don't have sacrifices with animals anymore is that the final sacrifice of Jesus Christ actually dealt with sin and its punishment for all humankind. And God was doing his most awesome act of love for you and me on the cross. It was an act of redemption. God was redeeming humankind. 
in Christ's death, he satisfied the righteousness and the holiness of God who hates sin and Jesus came to take your place and my place. It was an act of forgiveness. Two aspects of forgiveness. God forgives us as Savior and as a judge, pardoned one time at Calvary. While he acts as a judge and pardoned, daily life with the Lord, acknowledgement as a child of God, but my personal daily fellowship with him. It's not our confession that gets us clean, but acknowledges our need for our cleansing for today. Our confession keeps our fellowship right with him. So friend, let me ask you a question. Who is going to atone for your sin? The only thing in existence that atones for and adequately deals with our sinfulness is the blood of Jesus Christ. He came for the purpose of dying. His death atoned for our sin. And of course, there is access. In Hebrews 4.16, we read, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Because Jesus Christ went to the cross, he took our sinfulness upon himself, declared us no longer guilty, declared us righteous, declared us the children of God, sons and daughters of the living God. All of our sin has been atoned for, and we are forever in the family of God. That's what we don't see happening on Calvary about 2,000 years ago. So the real question is this. What have you done about that fact? That Almighty God sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to die a substitutionary, all-sufficient, adequate death at Calvary just because he loved you? If you're willing to acknowledge that you have sinned against the holy and righteous God the Father, if you're willing to acknowledge that you are always in need of his forgiveness, if you're willing to acknowledge that his death at Calvary paid your sin debt in full, if you're willing to believe him, if you're willing to surrender your life to him, then those words of redemption, forgiveness, and access become a reality in your life. These are the things we don't see when looking at pictures or movies of the crucifixion. But the truth is this, none of it applies until I receive Jesus Christ by faith as Saviour. And friend, that's my prayer for you. Every single sin from Adam and Eve right down to this moment was paid for in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can be saved no matter whom, no matter what. It's just a matter of trusting him. Amen.